camera people, catch everybody that looks mad, put them on the screen. Anybody that looks upset, put them on the screen today. Oh, enjoy in Jesus, hallelujah. Feeling mighty happy, feeling mighty fine. Let's go down south. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve today. I want us to bear in mind that we pray for those who will experience, if any, the effects of a storm. Somebody still sound happy. Oh, hallelujah.
Y'all sound like y'all want to have church. And if we're going to go to Georgia, if we're going to go to North Carolina, it sounds like this. Did you get that power? 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 I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. could have been getting blown over this morning a tree could have fell on your roof or break your car down but God's goodness and mercy and let me talk to saved folk he said when I see the blood I'll pass over you be seated thank you musicians thank you We are blessed, thank you, I like it like this, to have visitors with us today. And listen, let me tell you what I'm trying to do. 
I'm trying to move expeditiously. And I told y'all last night we were augmenting service, but y'all come here like you know we serve the God of the universe. If you ain't got no footwork, do you have some handwork? Uh-oh, watch it, CJ. You may be seated. 
in the presence of the Lord. We got to get out of here before the storm attempts to come. Y'all act like it ain't real. But I promise my boy Sean. I promise my boy Sean we're going to get out of here. And we're going to be in our warm or cool residences. Not driving. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Y'all try to be nice now so I can keep my word and get y'all out of here. Jesus, 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 that's it, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Somebody call him Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. Oh, my, my. Come on and call him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Savior, Savior.
Last time, everybody universally called Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Bless that wonderful name. Oh. Uh-huh. Last time. As I call your name, the church will applaud, but I want to thank all of you who in lieu of the announcement of the storm, you still had a desire to come to the house of the Lord. It ain't over. Church is still alive. I don't hear nobody. Church is still alive. And regardless what's going on all over the world, there's still a remnant of people who love to assemble and worship together. The Bible says, my inheritance are among those who are sanctified. Once you get to God's house, he'll meet you at your house. The old mothers would say, it's so glad I'm here in Jesus' name. We have visitors. These, yes. This particular individual heard me after preaching at New Birth, Dr. Jamal Bryant in Lithonia, Georgia. They are here from Apopka and they are looking for a home church. <laughs> Tierra and Curtis Lester, where are both of you so we can acknowledge you? Please stand, because we want to acknowledge you and love on you. Can we do that? We are the smallest, greatest ministry you're going to ever meet. Now, that's a fact, and I ain't going to say it again. Then we have someone that uh, heard me. They are from a renowned church in Jacksonville, Bethel Baptist Institutional Church, where their leader and pastor is Bishop Rudolph McKissick, Jr. Clap for that particular ministry because one of our members is the daughter of Rudolph McKissick, which is Janae which is actually my goddaughter. They are guests of Bishop and Pastor L.K. Robinson, Dr. Arvella James. Please stand. Can we thank God? And do better, because this is his sister. We are glad to have the sister. Hold on. Y'all make up your mind. This is Bishop. This says, that's your teacher? Well, then who's your sister? And what's her name? She ain't on here. So my office messed it up again. She ain't on here. Yeah, but this says that this woman is your sister. All right. Well, she's not his sister. Rewind. L.K. Robinson's sister just walked in. She is standing in row form. Will y'all appreciate her as well? Lord, have mercy, bless my church in Jesus' name. We're rebuking the storm so I won't turn into one. From Port, <laughs> from Port St. Joe, Florida. Never heard of it in my life, but I'm happy. They are the guests, hear me, of Montez Walker. One is his grandmother. The other is his mother. The third is his aunt, Gloria Mabin. Jackie Nick Nixon and Callie Calloway. Can we thank God for all three of them? I'm not going to ask which is which because y'all all look the same age and that's the way I'm going to leave it. Grandma Way, look at you. Mama, auntie, auntie got sanctified feet. What you say? Prophetess. Yeah, they ain't on here, but you can be all of it. I'll listen, I'll give you all of it. But I could see it in your feet. I can see it in your worship. We are glad to have all three. Can we appreciate them? Someone who's not, does not live here at all, never been to the church, told a guest from this city to go to this church. 
That's crazy. They watch, call somebody who live here and said, how you live here and you not at the Shabbat Church. Yasmin Jackson, where are you, Yasmin? We good to have you. Yasmin Jackson, is she in the hallway? This says Yasmin Jackson. Let's clap for her anyway and we're moving forward. From Buiton, Florida, they met this ministry, got acquainted with it through YouTube. Dino Monroe, Jacqueline Monroe, uh-oh, uh-huh. Deontay, am I saying that right, Deontay? All right, I am. Let's clap for the whole Monroe family from Boynton, Florida. Clap better. I'm not going to ask who's the Deontay, because I'm sure it's the one with, yeah, covering her face. Because I can't see my generation's mama naming them no Deontay. But I'm glad to have you all. It's good to see a brother here with his family, worshiping along with his family in these last and evil days. Let's clap for them. Thank you. Facebook, Arcadia, Florida. Her name is Latasha Camel. Where are you, Latasha Camel? Let's clap and make Latasha feel real good. Last but not least, this person heard me preach at New Birth as well. They hail and live in the city of Fort Washington, Maryland. I'll be there in October for Dr. Michael Freeman and a few other preachers. I'll be there. Uh-oh, yeah, I'll be there in October. It is the largest Word of Faith church in that area. We'll be there preaching. Kiera Banks and Skylar Durham, where are both of you? Let's clap for both of them. Scream loud for them. All of these birthdays and things I've announced for the month of July, I'm not revisiting them at all because we are in August. Somebody say amen. amen. August the 3rd, which is when? Yesterday. When is it? Yesterday. yesterday. I heard today up here, but it is yesterday, all right? It is yesterday, not today nor forevermore. It was yesterday. Yesterday, Father... And Dr. Barbara celebrated 49 years. It's their 49th wedding anniversary. Can we thank God? That is a, that's an accomplishment. Marriages don't even last 49 minutes no more. They stay together, but they ain't been together after 49 minutes. 49 years, people clap because you know that's a very long time, but your clap should be because they survived some stuff they ain't never talked about. <laughs> Satan don't want to see Christians happily married, and when you see a group that stay together, don't think they didn't weather no storms. So you need to clap for the survival that comes along with long marriages. August, August the 3rd was when? Yesterday. yesterday. Yesterday, one of our first babies of this church years ago under the pastorate of uh, Dr. Sonia Mixon, he turned 10 years old. We've been watching the Olympics in Paris all week until they end. We've been watching gymnastics. I believe that this church has birthed one. <laughs> LJ is 10 years old. Can we thank God for LJ Shirley? And I actually believe that we've birthed one. His father can't flip if you paid him a million dollars. You can't do no backhand flip. Come up here and do it. Uh -uh, come on down here and do it. We'll put the thing on you. I know you won't take credit now that he's famous. But if he'd have been falling, you'd have been like, it ain't in our blood, Pop. We thank God for his mother and his father who is nurturing. I don't hear nobody in protecting that particular gift. After this, I'm going straight to the Bible. Wasn't it not insane last night? Last night?
Sir Montez come up here real quick and I tell people when I salute one, I'm saluting everybody. They did a faith production on last night and I do declare. Thank you so much. Thank all of you so much. Singers, musicians, the technicians. It, it was incredible. And the way Elder Curry sang with no music. <laughs> then had the nerve to modulate two times. Oh. Spectacular. We should applaud the gifts that we have among us. I cannot begin my sermon without thanking one more person, and I really want y'all to thank him. I hope y'all can hear me clear out there because my sound men do music much better than they do preachers. They do singing and music. That's what they're known for. They ain't got enough Holy Ghost to know how to make a preacher come through mighty clear. They ain't got enough Holy Ghost yet. They need to fast and pray. But we have, even though Brother Lamar is just so exquisite, he learned from the ground up, but we have a professional um, media man who does the Super Bowl, does half times, you never see him. He's calling cameras one through 50. He's getting all the things you see on NFL and on NBA, but he's a member of our church. He's an elder here, Elder Troy White Stan. So we can thank God. Can we thank God for Troy White? Very humble, he's told no one what he does. Extremely humble, and he's training these young people free of charge to become the best media that they can be and to have some type of skill. Y'all don't hear me. As they get older, they have something to already lean on. And I appreciate him and what he sows into the kingdom of God. I wanted to say something else before I bore some of you, but I can't remember what it was. I guess I'm getting older now. Yeah, when you start acting like your daddy. Now, what is it I meant to say? Then maybe you just need not. No, we also have a young man who's pursuing college, but he will probably be one of the greatest actors and stage plays and on TV. He is Charles Curry Jr. Stan. I want to thank, stand up, son. We want to thank God. He's a bad boy. He's a bad boy. He's been in several plays here. He's been written up. His father and mother now are taking him on tours to look at certain schools. I just hope he don't go too far. Father wants to give him a chance to spread his wings. I want to clip him, but I'm not his daddy. So he needs to be glad to have parents that are willing to let him do what he has to do. Let's applaud the whole Curry clan. I would like to do that. All right, I did that, try to find out what I had to say, but I forgot, so. Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, put the flyer up. On this Friday, I need all of you that are members that are faithful to me to follow me to Gainesville. You did it last year, and we had a wonderful time at this church, Compassion Outreach Ministries. This woman of God needs the encouragement. We had good church. I need all of you that can to go with me this Friday to Gainesville. Service starts 730. I'm not flying. I could, but I'm going to feel the pressure you feel. I'm going to take that drive. And I'm going to drive back same day trying to get back. And then even though time is too tight, we have two members on this Saturday, August the 10th, getting married till death do they part. I don't hear nobody. Tiffany and Adam, y'all wave. They will become one. And that wedding is being held in Charleston, South Carolina. And they have made it through five sessions of deep counseling, even down to the last minute. 
because I told them if I'm your pastor, if I feel or see something that says y'all will not make it, then y'all need to pause. They said, okay, reluctantly. Adam was reluctant. Tiffany was like, you my pastor. But these two have made it through brutal investigation. And I think that y'all should encourage them with your applause. Look at somebody next to you and tell them we will not fail. We will not fail. So I want, want you to go to my page after this evening and to the church page and post that flyer of where we're going. I would like all the deacons, members, elders, whether we sing or not, praise team, I would like you there. Jonathan Vickers, if he's free, just want y'all there because it's different when people visit you, but there should be times when you return that gesture and go out of your way. We've had people visit us from across the world and it's just right that if they can come to us when we have that opportunity, we should show them the same love. Amen? So let's clap and love Jesus and get your Bibles. Now you who watch me, it's not that I have power, but God lends me some authority when it's used for the right reason. I told all of you that that stone was going to the left. Got a phone call from my meteorologist friend. He said, hey, man, I thought you was off this time because all of the, whatever y'all call them, types said that it was coming through, going through Tampa, coming through Orlando, hitting that way. He said, man, listen, that thing's so far out left that it's going around about Tallahassee. Y'all ain't talking to me. But I'm going to ask God to decrease the winds and let this thing just not, listen, you can't be stingy. Y'all stingy. Because you miss it, you don't mean you want it to hit somebody else. Now, I've got a few people I, I, I would like to send it to, but my issue is, and I'm glad I don't have that type of power. I have come to bless and not curse, but let's pray for any and everyone. The majority of the storm, because I like you to be well informed, is supposed to start tonight but get rough in the morning in the morning hours of Monday it is supposed to be very windy and etc we don't control the wind of the waves so never take life for granted talk to me y'all done danced the way you're sleeping now I had a dance session but uh, storms are real and we've had some so please let's not uh, be selfish let's pray for those that are in harm's way, that nothing, no deaths, no loss of life, no children hurt. I know we might lose some electricity, but I'd rather lose that than lose life. So let's clap real good for life. Let's go to the book of Psalm first. I love when y'all try to make me preach. I love it. Let's go to the book of Psalm first. Chapter 37, verse 23 through 25. Chapter, chapter 37, verses 23 through 25. Shabak, I love you all. You got to tell people that while... They're alive because it seems like death is coming a little more often. So whoever you're holding the grudge against, fix it. Tell your neighbor, get it right. There are a lot of people that are very critically wounded and sad because they actually love who they lost but didn't tell them. Talk to me, Africans. Don't let that be you. Don't hold a grudge to where you die with that grudge. Love people while you have them. Yes, 
Psalms 37, verse 23 through 25. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. Verse 24, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I wish I had better conversation this. I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous Forsaken, I think I have the wrong preachers. Nor his seed begging bread. I want to read it again. Psalms 37 verses 23 through 25. For them that got lost and trying to locate it, it's also on the screen. But I want you to locate it because then it shows you put forth effort. Psalm 37, verse 23, the steps of a good man. Y'all already know what I'm still teaching on. Order my steps. So everybody making steps don't mean God's in your steps because you've got to be a good man. You've got to be going where you're going because you have positive, y'all don't hear me, motives and you have people that you intend on blessing. Look to your left and right, become friendly and tell them, I'm going to bless you when I get there. Some of you owe people things because they blessing you and they ain't even there yet. People are helping you when they need help themselves. But look at somebody and tell them, I'm going to bless you when I get there. Those steps are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I love this. I have been young. And now am old. Look to my tell me, it's okay to age. It's okay to age. It's okay to age. You ain't got to be 50 wearing tight pants. It's okay to age. It's okay to age. It's okay. It's okay. You ain't got to be old trying to spike your hair up like the young people. Just keep it in your age group. They taught you how to get a Caesar, have a good edge up. Y'all be your age. Tell somebody and tell them it's all right to age. Can't have a six-pack all your life. You know, it's all right if the six-pack turns into a cake. It's, it's, it's all right. Just more of me to love. Dr. Mixon going to try to be 40 for the rest of her life, I'm telling you. I'm glad I'm not a woman because I can't put on all that stuff. Something to hold in the stomach, something to press up the boots, something to keep around the waist, slip, body shapers. I, 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 just, I just ain't got no time. Every man ought to shout, thank you, Jesus. You ought to. Yet have I never, these are the words of David, seen the righteous forsaken. And for all of you that's been good and you love God, the blessing goes from you to your children. Oh yeah, he says, and your children shall not become beggars. Gentlemen, look at somebody and tell them, my children shall not become beggars. Speak over your family. I know you mad at your son, but speak good over that boy. You parents acting like children. I don't care what happened to them hard-headed kids. No, they're your hard-headed kids. And you probably just as hard-headed as they are.
The way you live can affect how your children turn out. I wish parents would talk a little more. Your job is to train them up in the way that they should go. Whether they go that way or not, your job is to train them up. And when they are old, y'all don't hear, they won't depart. They may not listen to you while they're young and going through puberty. But when they go through hell, they're going to hear your voice in their ears. Yeah. And they're going to be like, my mama said, my daddy said, what would my father do right now? We cannot be so upset that we stop being role models. If I got parents in here who agree, jump up and say, talk to us, pastor. Now, you men should talk because don't do what I did because my daddy did it to me. If you raising boys and they rise up too much, you got to knock them out, like for real. You don't give no black sons time out. Uh-uh. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Too many phones. You take the phone, they got something else. But every now and then, you got to use that saying, I brought you in this world. You see how y'all ain't talking? Because you men ain't been raised by men, so I'll never do to my children what my daddy didn't do to me. Stop being a wimp. You spare the rod, you spoil the child. And nobody gonna want your little boy as a husband. Make that man grow up. My father knocked the disobedience out of me. He only had to do it one time. And I can fight, study martial arts, did all of my thing, but something about that man I fear. He 80 something years old and I still think he a ninja. I think in real parents, God will always put power in you to be able to defeat your children. I know y'all don't believe it. They might be the best boxer in the world, but when that boxer rise up against his mama, she grabs a broom, a pot, a pan, something crazy, and he'd be like, I can't believe what you did to me. Look at some of y'all from row three back that ain't clapping. When I grew up, you had to pick your own switch. They said, and if you bring a short one, I'm going to go out there. Now, it got a little abusive when they started using those extension cords. Now, that scared me. I ran all the way out my grandmama house. Give me that extension cord. No! But we are not going to raise children who goes through more hell than we did. Our steps are going to pave the way. Y'all not clapping for the next generation. The book of Mark, chapter 9, 27 through 31. Then I'm finished with my contextual readings. But Matthew 9, verse 27 through 31. And, and while you're looking for it, it's in the New Testament, first book of the New Testament. But while you're looking for it, let me say this for three loud talkers that are grown. I don't care how old my kids get, they will still be my kids. So when they raise up at 40, you can't tell me what to do. No, I can't. I am a, I'm, a, I'm a father just like you. No, God is so sweet. Let me see who jumps. That when he makes your son a father, you become a grandfather. We ain't going to never be on the same level. And when you become a grandfather, it makes me a great grandfather. So everything you become, you'll never catch up to your parents. I wish I had. You will never catch up to your parents. Now, pitiful parents have a way to still act like children. I'll leave that alone because the middle just got quiet and mad at me unless my sound ain't working again. Be old while you can. Enjoy it. Enjoy the knee aches and back aches. Enjoy them. It's better than dead. All right, I'm going to say it again. Enjoy what comes along with age. If you never wanted aches and wanted to have a six-pack, then tell God when you're about to change old, call your home. 
But if you live, we are all born to die. Don't complain when things start acting up. Cars do it. Houses break down. Everything as it ages takes on some kind of breakdown. So it's all right. Just say I enjoy more life than people ever enjoy. And I'm still doing better than most. And I think all of you that keep complaining on the turn complaint into praise by clapping your hands and telling God thank you for life. Yeah, if I saw some folk not clapping, you better hope that trumpet don't call for you this month. Better hope you don't go to the doctor and find out you got colon cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer. Now all of a sudden you want the church to pray for you and you want God to heal you. Because none of them cancers hurt right now. It hides. So you don't know what you're sitting in here with. As long as you know it's your knee, because the pain is there, at least you know where to find it. Cancer, you can't just find. So y'all better learn to praise him for every day that you have on this planet. Matthew 9, 27 through 31. When Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him. What type of men? They were crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? I wish I had young people help me. He said, Believe ye that I am able. Why would God come to your house and not leave you with something? Why would any of us, I'm going to preach, be in church and leave the same way that we came? The only way you leave the same way you came is you didn't believe he could do it. Look at somebody and tell them, do you believe God can do it? Now, some of you that are facetious and disconnected spiritually, you are like, do what? No, no, you know what your word is. You know what you need assistance with. You know what you need prayer for. You know that if you're saved and have an addiction, y'all ain't talking to me. You know that you're dating outside of the will of God. You know what you need help with. Nobody really has to tell you. When they talk about it, they're doing nothing but confirming what you already know. Tell somebody and tell them, yes, I need help in some areas. And I'm watching some of my friends and guys who ain't talking. And y'all know I know what areas we all need help in, don't you? Don't sit up in here acting fly. We need help. All of us need some help. I'm going to say it again. All of us need. And I will lift up mine eyes to the hill from which cometh my help. All of my help. I'm ready to holler, but all my help comes from the Lord. They said unto him, this is still verse 28, yea, Lord. Verse 29, then touched he their eyes saying, look how they get healed. And I'm about to preach this. According to your faith. He says for talkers, I have the power to give you sight. But do you have enough belief to receive it? So if you don't get what you came for, it ain't on the lack of power. It's on your lack of belief. I need three of my members who've been saved over 10 years to say three times, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I Assistant pastor, according to your faith, be it unto you. And it's obvious that they must have had enough faith because their eyes were open. Thank you, Dr. Tracy. That's the voice I'm missing. Jesus straightly charged them saying, see that no man know it. He says, I don't need credit for what I already know I can do. He said, what I want you to do for 10 focal jump is finally live through life with some sight. 
stop living blindly through life. I think he, my husband, we don't marry on thinking. See, I can't get, I'm hoping this is the house I'm supposed to buy. We don't move on hoping. I'm going to talk to my members. Don't you make a decision until you get directives from God that turns on the light in your dark places that gives you definitive answers. Most people live by their feelings, never by faith. Because faith asks too many serious questions. Faith says God can give you the house, but can you pay the mortgage? God can let you marry a good man that won't cheat, but can you cook clean and enjoy changing bed linen? Yep, everybody got quiet on that one. Why you got to go to cook and clean? Women work too. Okay, well, if you work, he need to know how to cook clean and run the bath. Either way. If I'm married and my wife pay the bills, I'm cooking. She ain't got to ask me what to eat. You paying all my bills? Oh, I'm going to cook for you three times a day. I ain't no wimp. I bet he can't cook. I bet your mama. Whoever's paying the bills, the others should bring to the table thrills. Will you tell your neighbor that? Whoever's paying the bills, the other should be bringing the thrills. That's a relationship thing, so let me get out of there. I like verse 30. Yes. Their eyes were open and straightly Jesus told them, don't tell nobody. But when something great happens to you that you know should have never happened, this is for my members. There's no way you can tell me not tell it and I'm going to hold it. Some of you, God's been so good to you, but we can't tell. Because you're withholding the publicity that he so greatly deserves. If he gave you a miracle in public, why is your praise private? Let me, let me. If he gave you something that your credit report said you should be denied for, why don't you praise his name in public? I don't get why some of you believe that praise is stuck in your heart. When the Bible says from the heart, the mouth speaks. So if God approved you and you know your credit bad and that man say, you've been approved. You shouldn't be acting deep. God bless you. Yes, yes. You ought to be like, got to run to the restroom. I'll be right back. You should zoom to the restroom. Hey, hey, hey. Sign the papers first just in case things change. Sign the papers. But 31 says, but they, when they were departed, they didn't keep his word. They spread abroad his fame in all that country. They could not stop talking about him. I just believe for three people, I'm almost done now. I believe for three folk who would talk to me that God is withholding a miracle from a lot of you because he know he ain't going to get nothing after. Everybody makes promises while they're desperate. If you do this, I promise. Then after you do it, they'll be like, I told you that. I forgot. I don't think I meant it like that. Everybody changes when they are no longer desperate. <laughs> Baby, if you let me back in, I'll never cheat again. That's because he ain't got no other place to live. His mama won't let him live back. So I promise, I promise, I promise. I need God to, for this church, I've got about 12, 14 minutes, to open some of your eyes. But he won't do it because he knows when he opens your eyes, you're going to close your mouths. See, y'all didn't see that. Jesus gave them a miracle and then told them, keep it quiet. It's not that they had to keep it quiet. Sometimes somebody will give you an order to see how you will respond. 
And what he tested them with was, is this miracle strong enough to make you still open your mouth? Some of you came here broke. You're going to leave broke. You know why? Broke was in your mouth, right? You're going to leave here single because single is in your mouth. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Closed mouths don't get fed. You can look at Mercedes cars every day, but can you buy one? You see, your eyes can make you miserable, but your mouth can set you free. Yep, the middle court. So when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul does not remain silent. It cries Sean, you did something for me a year and a half ago or a year, and I still use it in certain places, but I've never seen a quiet whistle. When you're running up and down the court and blowing it, making your calls, that sound demands that everyone listens. I don't understand how you think God is listening to your silence. When he wrote, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. How are you active and loud in your occupation, but quiet in your demonstration when you're not working? That's because what you do makes you money. But who woke you up this morning? Who started you on your way? Who put clothes on your back? Who put food on your table? Who kept you? And if he can't get a whistle, who can? So when I'm screaming and shouting, don't be like, that's the part of him I don't need. He just be yelling and screaming. Where were you when I had cancer? Where were you when I was paralyzed? Where were you when I had a stroke? Don't try to defend or kill my sound. Ask me my story. And after you hear my story, you will understand my sound. I've got college degrees with an S. Doesn't mean I'm not intelligent because I scream. Let's be educated. Let's talk about each other's backgrounds. Let's talk about the government. Let's talk about psychology. And let's see if I'm actually stupid. But in the middle of all of what we talk about, there's no way I'm not going to bring a Jesus conversation in there. Because the only way I got to the table with you is my steps were ordered yelling and I'm almost there and he didn't order me to sit with you hang with you and drive with you just to get where we want to go he said have fun where you're going but talk about me on your way every now and you don't have to beat nobody to death and make them hate Jesus you can crack a joke but everybody must strategically mention him at least every day to let him know you're the reason why I am who I am uh huh uh huh I don't care where we are, who we with, what my group is, half of them are in here. I bring up church and God every day. They ask me, where have you been? After hanging out, I hang with. After preaching, I go to enjoy. And they be like, where you coming from? Church? How did things go? Man, God moved, blah, blah, blah. Then we laugh, talk about sports, talk about this, that, and the other. And when we talk about that too long, I go back to, hey, man, this dude got a miracle last night. As long as you keep God out front, you can keep the miracle that he gives. Oh, y'all crazy. But once God don't get something out of you, he'll take back what he gave you. I, I, I don't believe that. The Lord give it. And the Lord taketh away. Come on, help me preach. But it said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me see if what I'm preaching is almost there. I want you to choose wisely who you're going to talk to right now. Because they might mess your whole miracle up your whole day. And they might be the storm that you're trying to avoid. But I want you to look to the left and the right. And tell your neighbor these words and watch their response. Tell them, I see you in your future. And you look much better. Just go on and tell. See how that tell them, neighbor. I see you. I. 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 I see you in the future. I don't care what you look like right now. All I know is you came today for God to open your eyes. And what I once thought about you, I don't think that anymore because I'm not looking at you from your past to your present. I'm looking at you from the present to the future. 
Watch it. Baby. We almost there now, babies. We going home. Why would you sit near somebody who's not celebrating what you are becoming? Every time you scream or shout, if they got an evil spirit, they frown and wish you would shut up. If they got the Holy Ghost, they'd be like, baby, praise him. I know it's been hard. It's getting hard out here for a pimp trying to get this money for the rent. Some of us can't even sin right no more because we ain't got enough money for that. Sin is broke. When you can't see where you're going in life, you need someone in your circle who can. And when you have the right person in your circle, let me see if two folks scream on this. They will tell you whether you like them or not. That ain't good. Don't do that. Come here. You got too much to be messing up now. You've come a long, long way. How did you digress back to where you are? Y'all quiet now. Because not many people have pure friendships. But when it's pure, you don't watch somebody keep going down the wrong road and hanging with the wrong crowd. You, you got to say it whether they like you or not. Now, they might cut you off. When they do, they just got rid of their reading glasses. Y'all ain't talking. Because all I'm trying to do is help you see a little better. I'm not trying to get in your business. Your business ain't more valuable than mine. But I'm trying to help you see a little more clearly. And the reason why I did it is not out of being nosy or trespassing. It's because where you are, I've been there. I wish I had to. And at that time, I wish I'd have listened to who I thought was being nosy. Some of you lost some good pairs of glasses and contact lenses over people not agreeing with your steps. That's because your steps are not ordered. Y'all in, your steps are not ordered by the Lord. You are ordering the Lord to be a part of your steps. When we ask God, give me five more minutes. When we ask God, to order our steps for one screamer. We're asking God, uh, teach me your word so that when I step outside of it, I need you to send someone that'll yank me right back. Now let me make this easy for loud screamers. Nobody gonna live perfect. We all gonna get out of line every now, right? every now and then. But when you're about to get out of line and about to die from your next step, you need God to get in somebody that'll pull your coattail and be like, I know you don't want to hear this, but I'm telling you whether you ever talk to me or not. I don't, I don't, I don't know what makes people that are living life blindly think that glasses ordered you. You got to order glasses. Ain't no eyeglasses asked for you. Let me tell you the process of it for 10 millionaires in the future. You have to first accept my seeing is a little blurry. Now, some of us that hate defects and glasses, we still try to focus our eyes and go through life without glasses. Be like, then we have to learn whether we're nearsighted. See, farsighted, or whether we have astigmatism. Or you can have a combination of both. Something is wrong with your optics. At that time, I wish I had somebody who'd been there. Somebody who loves you has to tell you, come on, you need to go see an eye doctor. And those who are crazy, I've been crazy for about three, four months. For five people, they'd be like, I don't need no glasses. Because they feel that as long as they can see most of the things. Oh, y'all, and not everything, it's okay. 
You know how many people went to court and lost their whole package of money because they couldn't read the fine print? Oh, because the fine print is too small for what your optics can see. The fine print is written like that because those who make those contracts know you will not pay attention to the smaller words. Young. But what is small? You need to pull out them bifocals, baby, because that's the thing that gets you in or out of trouble. And I don't care how small the person is in your life. You better learn to pay attention to somebody, because if not, how can the blind lead the blind? I want talkers. They both fall into a ditch. Sean, I got into a major financial rut because Elder Curry, I signed the contract. I only had 48 hours to sign it to make some good money. And I signed the contract. The man called me the next day. And he says, Dr. Hall said, yes. Said, I'm waiting on 50 more thousand dollars. I said, oh, no, I gave you the whole 30 grand. He said, I know you gave me 30 grand, but the contract is for 80. I went back, got the paper, and put on my glasses. It was already signed. And that three was not a three. Oh, y'all, it was an eight. Oh, y'all are missing it. Because I let my impartial vision Lock me into something that cost me more than I was willing to pay. And some of you are going through more than you have to go through because you won't allow someone to be your glasses. I might as well get in trouble because y'all ain't clapping no more. Real wives who love their men are nothing but glasses. I'm telling you. And men still want to see for themselves. But when you got a real woman, she'll tell you, I don't trust him. Don't go with her. Don't go down there. And until you learn it, right? She's not trying to run your life. She's trying to help you live your life. I wish some of the men would say amen because you know like I knew because I think I'm always right in certain things because I've got a lot of experiences. But when certain women, my mama, grandmama, friends say things to me and it happened, real men feel like this. Lord, she right. Lord. See, I can't. Lord, I'm going to hate to go in the house right now. Know what? I'm going to hang out. Hopefully she sleep. Jesus Christ. What am I going to have to hear for the next three and a half years? Putting on your glasses means to consider someone else's opinion. Let me say it again. Putting on your glasses is your way considering someone else's opinion. Especially of them that have been there before you. I'm about to close because y'all boring me now. As I continue to investigate this matter... I'm beginning to see, and I'm almost ready to holler and let you go, that faith hibernates in people who feel they have the ability to see everything. So faith hides out in you knowing one day you're going to need me. Because you're going to be going down the street and going to turn into a dead end, and you ain't going to see your way out, and you're going to have to ask God to increase my faith. Look at somebody and tell them, I can't afford to make the same mistakes I've been making. Tell them, I need a miracle before the summer has ended. Tell them, this is not just a prophetic announcement. This is an urgent request. I need God, I ain't got nobody, to help me out of a dilemma that I got myself into. I want to talk to talkers, brothers, and where he leads me. Whoever intentionally means you harm. Look at somebody and tell them there are some folk that intentionally mean you harm. I want to see if you're talking. If they are trying to manipulate you, manipulate, manipulate you, then that means they lead you with a reason of watching you die. So this is what it says, Dr. Barbara, because you are intelligent in the Holy Writ. It says, 
Can the blind lead the blind? Can they both, they both fall into a ditch? And then it says question mark. It is not a period. So it don't say the blind lead the blind and that they both fall into a ditch. It's saying the blind leads the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, what happens if they both fall into a ditch? I'm going to see if some men and women scream. One of you is going to survive for sure. So you rather be led than to be the leader. Because when the one out front falls, the one behind gets to fall on him. Yo. Oh, y'all, some of y'all too busy trying to be out front. Out front is why you're dying. Because you're leading blindly and you're leading folk that are blind. All right. Blind people that are blind, y'all have pity on each other. Y'all looking more for pity than sight. I don't need no one having pity on me. I need you to help me get where I have to go. I wish I had more talkers now. Pity will delay your arrival for years. You'll feel comfortable talking to people that understand you, but they can't stand under you. The blind lead the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, they both fall into a ditch. That's a question. The storm has already started. You ain't going nowhere. 